So today I'm going to talk about three different kinds of clay. I'm going to talk about earthenware clay, stoneware clay and porcelain. I'm going to describe some of the properties that each of these clays have and have a think about what kind of clay might be most suitable for you if you're a beginner at pottery. Um, some people say that porcelain is best for beginners because it's quite soft and you don't have to battle too hard to centre it. If you've got very hard clay, it can be quite difficult to, difficult to centre and if you're new uh, to throwing at the wheel, that's one of the immediate challenges is getting the clay to centre and if, it's, if you're using porcelain, it's quite soft uh, and you don't encounter that problem. Porcelain clay has got more particles, clay particles or platelets per square inch than the other two clays, which means that you can pull it and stretch it more which is one of the reasons why you can pull it into very thin, uh, translucent, fragile shapes. However, it is tricky to use. Um, it's quite soft, it's quite thirsty clay, which means that when you're throwing it on the wheel, um, it dries out quite quickly, which means you have to add a lot of water as you're going along. And as a new potter, um, it takes you longer to centre your your clay than somebody who's more experienced so you end up using a lot of water which means that the clay goes very soft and will collapse it tends to collapse so. and anyway it does have a bit of a mind of its own and will um, go in directions that you don't want it to go in so I would say probably porcelain I would not say is the best option for a beginner because it's quite tricky to tricky to control. So this is uh, this is earthenware clay. This in fact is a terracotta and this is a low fire clay um, which means it fires at low temperatures which also means that it is um, not actually it's still porous once it's been fired it's still porous it hasn't got to a temperature a low fire a low fire clay isn't fired to a temperature where it will um, form glass. So it's still, it's still porous uh, once it's been fired. So if you think about something like a um, plant pot uh, or bricks that are semi-porous, that's why it's because they're low fire temperature, low fire clays and they haven't reached a temperature whereby they will actually, the glass, uh, the glass forming components will melt in the clay. The good thing about terracotta is that it's very plastic, which means that when you shape it, it shapes relatively easily, and once you've shaped it, it stays in, it, it retains that shape. It doesn't just um, slump back into or go back into its original shape. So it's quite cooperative. One of the disadvantages of earthenware is that because it's low fire and it is still porous once it's been fired, it's not ideal for making things that are going to be water containing liquid. So it's not great for dinnerware or vases or mugs. If you glaze it, that will seal it and it will make it suitable for uh, containing liquid. Uh, but it's still relatively less strong than stoneware. So stoneware, I would say that stoneware, if I had to make a recommendation for a beginner, I would say stoneware, some kind of stoneware is, a, is, a, is, is your best option. The reason for that is it is, it's plastic, like terracotta, it will, when you shape it, it will retain its shape. It's relatively easy to shape. Um, it, it's a mid-fire clay, so once it's been fired, it is actually non-porous. So it's suitable for dinnerware um, and liquid containers. Um, and unlike earthenware, it's actually very strong. One of the reasons it's called stoneware is because it's got a stone-like quality of actually being very strong once it's been fired. If you're a beginner, I would definitely recommend using a clay with some grog in it. Grog is clay that has been fired and then ground up into a powder, and you can get clay, you can get grogs of various different sizes. Grog makes clay more workable, so uh, it makes it easier to throw and build 
it's easier to throw throw clay and build things from it if it's got some grog in it because it makes it stronger and it makes it more workable. Uh, it also stops it from shrinking so much when you are firing and dry, when you're drying out your clay and when you're firing it as well. The thing about grog though is that it, it essentially it, it's it's fired clay and it's hard. You can get different. You can get soft and hard grog, but whether it's soft grog or hard grog, it's still clay that has been fired and then ground up. So if you're going to do, if you're going to throw your clay at the wheel, then I would recommend using a grog, a fine grog, because otherwise if you start throwing a, a clay on the wheel that's got a very coarse grog in it, it will be very tough on your hands. So I would say, I would recommend a stoneware clay with a fine grog if you're a beginner. The other advantage of stoneware is that it's considerably cheaper than porcelain. Porcelain's about twice the price of earthenware and stoneware clay. So if you're a beginner and you're practicing and there's quite a lot of, uh, if quite a lot of clay is getting sacrificed into the splash pan, then it's a good idea to choose something that's a bit more economic. If you found this video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and then you will get a notification when I upload a new video and you can visit my website which is thepotterywheel.com and on my website you can print off a cheat sheet or a tip sheet about what things to consider when you're choosing a clay if you are a beginner. So I hope you enjoyed that and good luck with your new pottery projects.